Okay, part three of the Magnavox console stereo from 1965. In the last videos, we got the AM-FM radio chassis going good, so now we're going to tackle the Micromatic record changer. This record changer actually works, and I did replace the stylus, but I'm going to do a little cleanup and preventative maintenance on it to help make sure it stays working. I'm not going to do a total teardown and relubrication of this changer because, number one, I really don't like dealing with the mechanics of these things. And number two, this is one area where I go by the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But first, we're going to try to clean it up a little bit. And at first, it looked like this had some corrosion and stuff on it, but I don't think so. I think it's just dirt, because you see right here, this cleaned off very well with just a, a Clorox disinfectant wipe. So I think it'll be easier to clean this up than I had originally thought, which my feelings are not hurt by that at all. Okay, that looks a lot better, doesn't it? It's amazing what a little cleanup will do to one. Yeah, the only areas that suffered a little bit, and I don't even know that this is showing up on the camera, but right in here there's a little bit of pitting of the paint where the dirt or corrosion or whatever that crap was was the worst. And I noticed the paint here is a little bit discolored for whatever reason. I don't know whether that's from possibly heat from the motor doing that, which I don't know why, because the motor is not even under that. I'm thinking it's probably body oil. It's probably reacted with the paint in some way or another. But it looks a thousand times better than it did. Now we'll start the uh, preventative maintenance, and in order to do that we'll have to remove the turntable platter, and in order to remove the platter there's a little clip around here that You'll need to gently pry off with a small screwdriver. And then once you uh, get the clip removed, you can just the platter will just lift off. Okay, here we are with the platter removed. And one thing to take note of when removing the platter on any record changer, sometimes there'll be one or more washers that will uh, stick to the underside of the platter when you lift it off from this area here. You want to make sure you don't lose any of those washers. Okay, what I intend to do to this record changer is clean all the lubrication off of the center spindle and the bearing here and re-lubricate with this uh, white lithium grease. I'm also going to remove these two idler wheels and, and clean the shafts that they turn on and re-lubricate. I'll also clean the wheels with rubber renew just to give them a little more grip. These things are still pliable so you know they're not hard as a rock like so many of them are so that's a good thing. You might notice this changer has two wheels in it. One wheel turns the uh, turntable platter and the other wheel is responsible for turning the changer mechanism. So the, the advantage to that is, no matter what speed the turntable is set to, whether you're playing at 16 RPM or 78 RPM, it changes the records at the same rate of speed. Whereas other record changers that use a single idler wheel to drive everything, when you're on the 16 RPM setting, it seems like it takes forever to change a record. And when you're on 78, it runs so fast that you think the changer is going to fly apart on you. And once I clean the wheels and lubricate the spindle, I will remove the motor. You can see it right there. And take that apart and clean it and re-lubricate it. Because after 50 years, I'm sure it could stand to be re -oiled. and then that's pretty much all I'm going to do as far as the cleaning and lubrication unless something else happens that makes me go further and I'll adjust the tracking pressure on the uh, tone arm I noticed while playing a record it liked to skip a little bit 
I measured the tracking force and it's running around 2.5 grams which is a little bit low for this cartridge. I think these cartridges are supposed to track in the 3.5 to 4 gram range so I'll double check that and set it to the correct tracking force because contrary to what a lot of people think too low of tracking force can do more harm to a record than too much tracking pressure so you want to keep your tracking force set to the recommended level that's for the cartridge that you're using okay here are the rubber wheels all cleaned and ready to put back on but I'm not going to do that right now here are the washers and the bearing that come off of the center spindle they're laid out exactly like they go over the spindle this is the bottom washer next one up bearing and the washer that goes on top of the bearing this is obviously the platter retaining clip and this is one of the screws that hold the idler wheel in place we want to clean all the old junk off of these each one of these pieces and then we'll re-lubricate with the lithium grease. You can see all the old grease inside of this uh, bearing assembly. All that will need to be cleaned out and replaced with fresh grease. And we'll use rubbing alcohol to clean it up. And what we can't get out with a rubbing alcohol, we'll use contact cleaner spray. Get them nice and clean and then re-lubricate. And there's the bearing all cleaned and re-lubricated, ready to be slid back down over the spindle. And now we're ready to remove the motor and clean it and lubricate it. But first we have to remove the motor. And that's held in place by these three clips. One here, one here, and one under here. And then once we get that apart, we can get that motor assembly dismounted. Then we can take it apart clean it, lubricate it, and it'll be good for another 50 years. Okay, I stand corrected. You, corrected. you do not have to remove this motor mounting bracket. You just have to remove the four screws or the four bolts from the motor and it separates from the bracket without all this having to be removed. So, it makes it a little easier. Okay, here we are with the record changer cleaned serviced, installed back in the stereo. I hope it's fixed. Uh, the first time I tried it, it didn't really want to drop records like it should. I could apply a little pressure right here and the record would drop. Well, I got to looking and I discovered a spring was missing. And, and, and thank goodness for parts record changers. Why do you think I keep all this junk? I'll show you the spring that was missing or the location of it. Okay, the spring went from here to here. This is the spindle. And once I removed the spring off of this junk record changer and mounted it on this one, it seems to be dropping records okay. I uh, hope it doesn't make a liar out of me and start misbehaving again. Okay, let's give it a try with a couple of LPs here. Little Andy Williams, followed by the four preps for your listening pleasure this afternoon. Andy Williams, Born Free, and the four preps, How to Succeed in Love. Born Free is free as the wind. As free as the grass grows. And we'll stop that now because I don't want to get the copyright police on my back. Thank you very much. You dropped perfectly. Which we have 
all the way up. Okay, that's good. Now let's try it with a with some 45s and see if it behaves correctly. Okay, here we are with some 45s. Let's see if it wants to behave correctly with them. Amazing. need to obtain the automatic 45 RPM stacking adapter so I don't have to use these little yellow plastic inserts which I'm kind of running low on. Okay, that's the record player operation and it seems to be working just fine. Okay, here's our FM. Well, where's Q101? This FM is still not very spiffy. It was actually doing pretty good for a while, and then I was listening to it last night, and it faded out into oblivion. So there's probably going to be another part to this video. Let's see what AM's doing. interference but AM is doing pretty good okay there you go thanks for watching and we'll do another part on this later